It is really um, my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Siu Kyung Lee. And you know, there's many unfortunate things about having a child with Fox G1 syndrome and a rare disease. But one of the luckiest things that we have going for us is that we have a fellow parent who happens to be a neuroscientist, as is her husband. And at the top of their careers, they decided to convert both their labs into Fox G1 labs and dedicate their lives to find a cure for this disease. That is really unheard of in any other rare disease community, really completely unheard of. Usually, you know, you have grants to scientists and you're trying to capture their attention and do a little work and piece it together. But what we have with Sue and Jay is really a consortium that comes together at their hub where they are just, you know, it's not about how much we're funding them, they're just trying to move as fast as they can and really create this center of neurobiological <coughs> expertise in Fox G1 syndrome. And as you'll soon see with Sue's presentation, she's also the loveliest, most positive person. Um, and it's been a joy to work with her and get to know her and her family um, in the way that I do. And I, I consider her one of my closest friends now. So Sue, come on up. All right. Hi, all. It's my honor to meet you all in um, person and also through the Zoom. I, in this incredibly exciting meeting, um, I think this is, again, this conference is one of the best conference or the best conference that I have, I have ever uh, been in my lifetime. And that I have been in so many conferences so far. <laughs> so that tells something. Um, so my name is Sue, and here meet our family. Um, my daughter, Yuna, um, she's almost 13 years, uh, she's soon to be 13 years old, and she uh, has Fox G mutation. And here's Yuna's little brother, Jun. He's like happy and the most uh, positive, uh, enjoyable child and they make really good sister and brother. Um, and my husband Jay is here. He is sorry not to be here to meet you all, but he's been uh, looking through the live streaming. Hi Jay, um, I'm here. <laughs> all right, so to tell you a little bit about uh, my precious Yuna, she was born in 2012. And as all of you have experienced, she had a difficulty in feeding and sleeping, and she had inconsolable crying, crying day and night, um, and she failed to thrive. And she is, or she was my first child, um, and I felt miserable because what kind of mom am I not to be able to feed my child and provide the comfort that she need? Um, so not knowing that she had genetic conditions, it, it, I felt so guilty about it. Um, she, uh, I was told that she, her brain uh, circumference is much smaller and it's not growing fast enough, like her head is not growing fast enough and she has microcephaly. Um, and then she had her first seizure about six months of uh, age and then uh, we had a brain MRI, and I heard all the terms that I heard only through scientific papers. Um, she had microcephaly, enlarged ventricle, and corpus callosum agenesis, and I've heard all of these terms already. But still, hearing that my own child have all of this in her brain uh, made these terms so different. Like this, these, all of these become personal, and I felt like, oh, how didn't I know this? Like, wh how didn't I know what these mean? Like, I, 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 this is something that I heard throughout my career as a scientist, but that was the moment that I really understood what that is. Um, she was diagnosed hypotonic cerebral palsy, rest syndrome in clinic. We had sequenced her MECP2 gene that caused typical rest syndrome. She had no abnormalities. And then we, go, we went through many, many genetic diagnoses, including microarray that covers more than 3,000 uh, genes. And then she had no problem there. Meanwhile, she had severe aspiration. 
uh, which is confirmed by swallow test. Um, and then um, when I went to one of NIH meetings and when I was talking to right, uh, my colleague who happened to be sitting right next door, he was a pediatric neurologist and I told him about all my daughter's condition. And then I was told that she might have FOX G1 mutation. So we did sequence her FOX G1 gene mutation and uh, we found the frame shift mutation. When I first heard that she might have FOX G1 mutation, I was blown away and I thought that cannot be true because I know what that is. I have used this gene in my lab and how could that be when uh, knowing that this gene mutation is extremely rare? But that turned out to be really case and she continues to have seizures. Um, and I thought what outcome would be eventually. Um, but she now, MA, uh, she's able to sit up and she continuously made really impressive progress in motor control and cognition. It may not be impressive in other people, but this means word to me. And I went to her um, school opening house uh, a few days ago, and then I met her teacher who, uh, uh, taught Yuna for the last year, and Yuna uh, happened to remain in the same classroom, and she said, Yuna's teacher said, Yuna is so smart and so funny, uh, and she has a wonderful personality, and she really encouraged me to be a better human, and that, uh, that was amazing. Like, she's, my Yuna's making change in this world already. Um, so here, how we are prepared to be a scientist uh, working on the Fox G1 syndrome. My husband, Jay, had his PhD at Texas A&M on gene regulation. Then he went to uh, postdoctoral studies at MGH uh, Boston uh, on the area of neuro uh, endocrinology and gene regulation. Then he uh, joined the biotech uh, company, just founded a uh, company called Ligand in San Diego, California. Meanwhile, I got my PhD in Cheonnam National University in Korea in the area of gene regulation. Then I moved to San Diego uh, and did my postdoctoral fellowship at Sok Institute where I studied the brain development. I had been al always fascinated by brains um, and development of brains. So as all of you know, and all of us know, uh, brain is such a complex uh, organ, um, and it makes what we do everything possible. And we all know that when there's any little thing goes wrong, then a child can suffer so much. And I wanted to understand how the brain is assembled for this functional organ uh, during development. So that's what I studied. And we joined the faculty at Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas, as associate and assistant professor. And we developed our own research program in the area of gene regulation, brain development, endocrinology, and cancer. Um, then later, uh, right after Yuna was born, we moved uh, to be a professors at OHSU, Oregon Health and Science University uh, in Portland. And then we uh, added a new things to our research portfolio to study feeding and motor, uh, motor controls. And then soon after, we found that Yuna has the mutation on the Fox G1 gene. We launched the Fox G1 syndrome study, and then we are incredibly, we were incredibly fortunate to, to be connected with the Fox G1 Research Foundation and do this journey together. Um, we moved to uh, University of Buffalo, state of New York, um, to uh, have a Fox G1 Research Center. We moved here because the school also promised us, um, give us two, uh, very strong support to our research effort on the Fox G1 gene and finding Fox G1 uh, treatment option. So meet our lab, the Lee Lab, Fox G1 Center. Uh, we have about 30 scientists who are very dedicated and committed to finding the uh, therapies for the Fox G1 syndrome. And uh, Jay and I serve as a PIs, but we have our senior research associate, number of postdoctoral fellows, uh, and graduate students, technicians, and undergraduate students. And these are really incredible team of uh, scientists. They know that what we are doing 
really matters and can change the world. Um, so our research goal is to make fox Juan syndrome mouse models. We heard about the spectrum of this disease. We didn't want to rely on only one type of mouse to find the cures or treatment for fox one We wanted to cover all kinds of mutation. So we generated uh, frame shift, deletions, and nonsense, uh, and the uh, different type of mutations, missense mutations as well. So we have multiple lines, we have established multiple lines of mice, and we found out that there is a good correlation between mouse behavior and mouse symptoms and human symptoms. Um, so we wanted to study, or we are studying fox one key symptoms using our new mouse models. We wish to understand how fox mutation lead to all the symptoms that our kids are suffering, um, and we wish to develop therapies. And here's um, Jay and Yuna again, and our this is Yuna's wheelchair accessible band, and this is our <laughs> car li <laughs> license plate. We wanted to save cure Fox G1. <laughs> there was not enough space, so <laughs> G1 was cut out. But you know what we are trying to say: cure Fox G1. <laughs> And you know, I was looking like, how could you not have G1 there? <laughs> All right, so here's our effort in, uh, for the therapy development. We are using Fox G1 syndrome mouse models as platforms for the preclinical pre test. Um, and we are working to find gene therapy. Okay, our kids' gene has some problem with the Fox G1. Can we just put the Fox G1 gene back uh, to our kids' brain cells? And that might help uh, to improve their cognition, for instance. And we have some evidence that that's happening in mouse. We are also working on tRNA therapy for nonsense type of mutation. And ASO, we heard about ASO in this um, today's the first meeting, Ellison's talk, and they had wonderful progress with ASO, and we are working the same therapeutic options for Fox G1 syndrome. We are also testing FDA-approved drugs on our mouse models and other cellular models. And of course, we cannot do all of this just in our lab alone. And then Fox G1 Research Foundation made these incredible connections among research uh, laboratories and scientists who have interest in Fox G1 gene and Fox G1 syndrome. So we are working with Alice Motris lab at UCSD who created stem cells from our kids' cells um, and they generate these little tiny brains in dish. It's amazing technology. We are working with Corinne who's there. Hi, Corinne. And she's using GebraFish as a model, and this is really important model to screen the uh, drugs. Um, and I heard a very uh, exciting talk from Corinne a, a couple of days ago. And we have uh, we are working with Fabian, who's there, um, and he's from Macquarie University, and he's very wonderful mouse geneticist. And we are working together to develop factual mouse models. We are working with the John Paz lab uh, in UCSF, Gladstone Institute, and she's working on the seizures and electrophysiology using our mouse models. And we are working with Chris Ahon at University of Iowa, who, uh, who developed a new therapy using tRNA for nonsense type of mutation. So we'll bring, or we are bringing his technology to Fox G1 gene to see whether this is also applicable to Fox G1 gene mutation. We are working with Wayson uh, in our institute, University of Buffalo, who are testing auditory functions uh, in Fox G1 mouse. Um, we had a fortunate relationship with Youngshin Im through the marriage uh, with um, my lab member. And <laughs> he recruited his wife and convinced his wife to study Fox G1. So she's a faculty member at UPenn, and now she's working on the uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. Um, and then we are teaming with Kathleen Meyer and her uh, critical team member, Shibi, is over there. And um, Shibi and we teamed together, Kathleen, Shibi, and we teamed together to develop the gene therapy options for the Fox G1. So what motivates Fox G1 scientists? In general, scientists are driven by curiosity. 
in interest in science and desire for intellectual challenge. And it gives, it gives us uh, enormous satisfaction when we solve these all life uh, puzzles. But we also want to make a difference in the world. And we Fox scientists who's working to solve or find the better options for Fox young children, we are very mo motivated further motivated because we know that we can help function children and their families. So as Yuna's teacher told us, I strongly feel that Fox families like Yuna and you guys uh, make us better scientists. Okay, so what I learned as a Fox mom and Fox scientist, when we had or learned Yuna's diagnosis, my colleagues, scientists and physicians told me I am sorry to tell you this, but Foxygen is essential for making baby's brain before they are born. Your child was already born with a brain deficit. There is not much you or we can do to treat Foxygen syndrome at the core of her disorder. Just take a good care of your child, your baby, and focus on managing her seizures and other symptoms. And we were told like, it doesn't matter if you know her gene mutation or not. Like we were discouraged going after her genetic diagnosis because they said it would not make any difference in your life or your child's life. But I or Jay and I could not give up without trying hard and testing at least if a Fox Yuan does really nothing as they said in the brain after babies are born. So we launched our Fox Yuan research program, our life's mission on the Fox Yuan. And amazingly we found that Fox Yuan continues to work to make brains functional after birth. And then it was a great news. I mean, f unfortunately for these mice that we used, but great news for us. Uh, <laughs> because there are a lot of issues that we can fix in Fox Yuan syndrome. We just have to find a way to do this. And then we began to search better therapy options tailored for Fox Yuan syndrome, and we are making progress. I'm so proud and then share this news with you. Um, so good day is coming. So what I learned in my journey, I was desperate at the beginning. I thought I had to do something and everything that I could do even if I cannot find any better way to treat my child. I need to try. And my research uh, on the Fox one for the past decade made me more and more hopeful every day that we will find better ways to treat our Fox G1 child or children. So I'm a very shy person. I usually don't share what I feel deep inside my heart and also I am as a scientist, I'm really conserved and worried that um, I, I don't want to exaggerate anything. But today, um, I'm going to share with you really what I think, and I want to share these feelings with my fellow Fox G1 parents. This is what I think, and what really uh, true, what is really true. Don't give up, stay strong, and remain hopeful. Dream big, and great things are coming. And we scientists are so grateful for your support and thank you Fox Yuan community. Thank you so much.